Welcome back. Today I'm continuing the process of converting my 1981 DeLorean into an electric vehicle. And on today's episode, I'm going to continue what I was doing last week. In the last episode, I kind of ended with uh, taking a look at the HVAC system and realizing that the HVAC box is not going to fit in the car. So let's go ahead and take a look at that HVAC system. This is Project Lightning. I'm doing some initial fitment testing for the AC system, trying to get the uh, evaporator core installed in a good location, as well as having the hoses routed uh, in a good spot so I can get the compressor, uh, which is gonna sit up here in front of the battery box. Uh, and I'm doing it this way because this is how the routing was done in the Chevy Bolt. And so that, you know, is gonna make things easier if I can use all the same components. So in particular, this is the, the main pipe. Over there, it connects to the evaporator through the firewall. And then over here, this is the ports for um, vacuuming and the high and low ports um, right here. And what I found is like, this actually fits right where I need it to go. Um, it's, it's actually fantastic. So I'm gonna mark with some paint. Uh, you can see that I've got a little bit of, of wiggle room here. Like I can bring it this way a little bit uh, because these, these hoses here are flexible. Um, and then up and down, I can move it a pretty decent amount um, there. And uh, in and out, this uh, right now is kind of a tight squeeze, but it'll actually need to go through the firewall. The firewall in the bolt is basically a thin piece of sheet metal, but in the DeLorean, it's actually um, like two um, inches or something like that. It's over an inch. Um, I can't remember how many millimeters it was, but either way, I wanna say 40 millimeters. Um, but either way, I need to be able to get that connector through the firewall a little bit um, so that it matches up with the evaporator that's gonna go on the other side. So far, this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna use a paint marker and mark there uh, just for reference so I know in the future. Moving on to the inside of the car here, the first thing I need to deal with is the blower. So this has the blower motor. I've actually removed the blower motor just to make it lighter so it's easier to move around. Um, and I would actually like to keep the filter. So um, basically here is where the old blower motor would connect up right to that. And if I can do that, then that would be great. And as you can see here, I can use this and bolt it pretty much straight up there. All I need is a little bit of a plate in between those two, and then I can mount it right there. Um, it might be a little bit awkward because the filter is only pretty much getting half used in there, but I'm okay with that because the original DeLorean did not have any kind of a cabin air filter, uh, so I think that would be cool to have it. Um, and this also gives me some flexibility in this, this dimension here to rotate it to make sure that the end is pointing in the right direction. Um, and I just need to make sure that it doesn't go farther to the left um, so that it can't connect to the AC box. But I think that will be just fine. If I need to extend it further, I can do that. That's, that's no problem. I can 3D print a little adapter plate or something, or adapter tube, um, so that will be just fine. The only thing I need to worry about on this side is the recirculation flap. And so that will need to be completely redesigned to use the stepper motor, but I think I'll be able to make that work no problem. So yeah, and then in terms of like leg room, this is out of the way. Um, it might be a little bit less leg room than it originally had, but either way, I mean, the DeLorean was uh, not cramped on the passenger side. So yeah, this is gonna be great. I will be able to do this no problem. I'm now looking at the recirculation flap uh, from the bolt. So it has this little motor over here and then this flap moves back and forth and it moves not quite 90 degrees. Like I would say it's maybe 80 degrees or something like that. And it just moves through that and that's how it changes from recirculating. Sorry, this is uh, fresh air and this is recirculation mode. Uh, compared to the DeLorean, here's how its little flap works. So it opens this way here. 
Um, and as you can see, it doesn't quite open up 90 degrees. Um, it's maybe 60, I don't know, certainly more than 45. Oh, look how crusty this is. Uh, and look at my hand, it's covered in this rust. But I'm thinking this is probably close enough. Like there's a calibration that happens in the bolt on startup that determines its full range. And then I think that will work because this is close enough to 90. So I think if I can take this little motor and put it effectively on this axis and then remove all this other crap. So basically it's just a flat plate and then this, you know, um, this little motor right here. I think if I do that, uh, that will just kind of work. Another item that I need to deal with in the cabin here is the AC box that can, has all the controls and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I've taken just the plastic parts, again, so that it's light and easy to move around. And I've actually cut off some of the brackets. And I've also trimmed the the little drain hole there at the bottom because it's kind of a tight squeeze. But uh, let me see if I can put this in here. <laughs> And there you go. You can see that it actually does fit in here now. Um, that is going to be a problem where the AC line is currently trying to go out um, where the drain for the windshield is. So that's a bit of a problem. I'll need to move it over to the left just a bit more than it is here. But up top, the defrost actually perfectly lines up. It's pretty amazing. Um, the upper vent completely useless. So I'll need to do something there. But then the, uh, the, the floor vents, those would match up no problem. So the only thing I need to figure out is how I can get that upper vent to actually go to the upper vents in the car. Um, but if I can make that work, then we are in business. I've made an additional test fit here. What I've done is I put the other side of the box in place and yeah, it totally fits. This is actually in the proper vertical orientation as well. Um, this is great, except for one small issue, which is that upper vent just goes pretty much into that little crevice up there, but that's just not enough air flow. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess I could technically use that as a bit of the vent, um, but it's, it's still, it's a very small vent for the front, like the main blower. Uh, when you want air conditioning, you kind of want it blowing at your face, not up under the dash. So, um, I think I can fix that though. I've got, I've got an idea. And then as far as positioning, this is pretty much where it will sit. Um, if I can make it go a little bit further that way, that would be okay. Um, but that's about as far this way as it can go. Um, and then I've also confirmed on the other side, because that is sitting a little bit higher than I had originally anticipated. So you can see that I had made those yellow marks down there, um, but it's actually gonna be more like up here. Um, I also went and confirmed with my little AC setup over here that I've kind of got mocked up that all of those you know, tubes should fit into the proper places. So yeah, we're looking good. Let me pull that box out and do a little bit of figuring, see if I can work with that upper vent. I'm back on the bench now. And so this is that front vent. And notice when it's closed, the, the flange that it closes up is, is actually down here. It's about an inch lower than the top plane here, right? Um, which means that anything above there is kind of fine to cut away. So I'm thinking that, um, cause I'm clear this will be able to spin in there. So it's got clearance. Um, but if I basically cut away this material in here and even on the front in, in this area, I can cut away all of that and basically make a new duct um, like I could make a triangular duct that sat in here that conformed to the, uh, the top of the area in the, uh, under the dash. And so I think that would work. It might not be the best amount of airflow because like this is a lot more airflow than just coming out the sides, but I think it's enough. Um, and then I would have to make some custom ducting, but that's fine. That's just 3d printing. Um, and 
yeah, I can make that work. Um, I also checked the other side of this just to make sure that there's nothing in the way. And there is actually a little mount that sits next to it that I would just not be able to cut away, but that's fine. Similarly over here, there's actually a hole for the temperature sensor. So that would have to remain, um, but I can cut away the rest of it over here. And so it's basically the same on both sides. So with that, I think I'm actually gonna call this project um, possible and it's no longer blocking me because really this was just me trying to make sure that this is all going to fit and work. And so I don't need to actually cut this and make the ducts and do all that stuff yet because I know it's gonna fit. But what I do wanna do is get this in the proper location and sat there um, and then I can start routing wires around it because I know where it's gonna live. And there's, you know, there's a lot of room around it. Um, similarly with this, I have, uh, in, the, in the other vent on the, with the flapper door, I am sure that I know how to do that. I'm not gonna do it now, but now that I know that it's no longer a blocking issue, I'm gonna say done with it and move on. Um, and that's because I would like to get my electrical system working so that I can drive the car <laughs> and get it back to a state. Even if I don't have AC and DC fast charging yet, that's fine, I have other things that are more pressing. I've decided that the next best course of action was to go ahead and do the same thing uh, to the front electronics that I did for the rear. So this is all I've got left at this point. Uh, there's very few items in here. Uh, in particular, the body control module, everything is removed from it. So those were removed sitting over there. Um, the front fuse box, I've only got, I think, six wires that go to it, and then that will be finished. I've got a couple other modules up here. Uh, the gateway module only has like five wires. Um, yeah, so it's really coming along and I'm, and I'm starting to narrow things down. Once I figure out where things are going to live here, the next thing is I need to start making mounting brackets uh, and things like that just so that they can be put in their position and I know with 100% certainty that that is where they're gonna be. And then I think I can start the rewiring job. Uh, there's also the potential that there's still some wires back here um, not very many that I could uh, disconnect. Um, so I might do that. And then also in the far back of the car, there are some wires that actually go like under the car up to the BMS system in the main battery. So that I might also rip apart. But those are pretty well disconnected from everything else. So we'll just see how it goes. And yeah, I've only been working on this for maybe six hours or so since the last video. So I'm making really good progress here, and in another few hours, I should be done. There is very little left in here, as you can see. Um, these three modules that are remaining, the main instrument cluster the screen there, and then this is the radio module, and then this is the telecommunications module that handles Wi-Fi and that kind of thing. Um, these all have these kind of complicated cables, um, like coax cables that go between them. So I decided not to snip those and I'll just, I'll just deal with it. Um, these wires here, there was just a lot of them that go from one module to another. So again, just figured I would hold off on cutting those until I decide whether or not I need to do it. Also here in the back where the main fuse box is, all of the connectors with all the wires that plug into the, the rear of the fuse box there, those have all been removed um, and they're all disconnected and labeled and everything. So, so you can see that it's pretty much empty back here now. This is definitely looking so much better than it was just uh, a few weeks ago. I'm now in a really good position because most of the electrical wiring is all cut out and I can start on the rebuilding process. So in the next episode, what I'll be doing is trying to find some locations for all of those modules and making some brackets maybe or 3D printing some mounting hardware or something like that. And uh, we'll keep it going. If that all seems like something that you'd be interested in watching, please go ahead, hit the like button, write a comment, hit the subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Thank you, and I will see you next time. This is Project Lightning. <laughs>